Hi, I'm Dottie DeLong with Appalachian Eats, and it's New Year's Day, so we're going to try a traditional corned beef and cabbage type meal. Uh, Jess and I do something a little bit different, so we're going to do, I'm going to do mine first here at the apartment, and then she's going to show you her idea of a cabbage, corned beef and cabbage meal. So I'm going to start out, this is a soup, and we're going to have basically... I think what's this five ingredients cabbage of course potatoes onions I put a little carrots in just mostly for color because it's just a, a bland color not to have anything in it and then your corned beef which is just the regular canned corned beef you can get from the grocery store shelves so oh and also the beef broth I'm going to start out with chopped cabbage just chopped in a bite-sized pieces whatever you like uh, potatoes and this is um, probably about four cups of chopped potatoes with water and a good size onion or two medium onions because we like our onions and then like I said carrots mostly for color now I'm going to take actually I think I want to take and put some of the beef broth in first to get started and probably I'll use every bit of this and maybe even add water because I want all the vegetables to be completely covered and then I will take the corned beef and just kind of break it up into this and add whatever else uh, amount of uh, water I need to cover the the whole shebang and this I am not a huge chunky corned beef type of person yes this is going to need much more water uh, I like corned beef flavor but I personally am not the a big corned beef meat eater so I like to break it up into smaller just almost flakes okay I believe ready yeah all right so you want to have it completely have your vegetables all covered and you can add as much water and broth as you want now if I want this any meatier I can always add a bouillon cube to uh, make it richer but I think this is going to do it now from this point I'll just season it up salt pepper or maybe even a little garlic salt to taste and let it cook till it's all tender and meld together and um, we'll be ready to eat all right after this is done which I'll need to remove remove my noodle board off the stove turn my oven on and I'm going to make cornbread and that is usually something that uh, I never measure out and it's just um, cornmeal and I love yellow cornmeal and it's uh, not always easy to find the yellow cornmeal self-rising makes it easier cornmeal flour salt and some people like a little touch of sugar and I don't tell all my family this but I do too <clears throat> so once we get this all noodle board removed and the cor corn uh, beef on then I'll start my cornbread and dinner for New Year's Day will be ready all right while Mima is putting her soup together and she's gonna let that simmer on the stove for a while I'm going to put together a traditional New Year's uh, dinner that my mom would always do she still does she probably do it today um, and it's something I typically do too on New Year's um, it's great for fall uh, winter all those times when it's really cold outside and you just want something kind of quick and comforting um, with a little bit of cornbread it's great it makes a whole meal in one pan I use a 9 by 13 and we're going to use the same ingredients that Mima had except we're going to uh, leave out the carrots and leave out the broth uh, but other than that it's basically the same ingredients um, so what I want to do first is start with my potatoes and I have four um, large type potatoes here these are just russet potatoes um, I wouldn't use any kind of a red potato they don't do well 
uh, in this dish. So you'll want a russet type of potato. I have a medium sized onion and I'm going to use my mandolin here and uh, slice those very finely. And I'll start with my potatoes on the bottom. I'll put a little salt on those and then I'll do my onions on top of that. Then you're just going to layer the cabbage and then the corned beef on top. And this is just a can of corned beef here, which I murdered getting out of the can. It was terrible. Um, and this is one small medium head of cabbage that I cut into bite sized pieces. So I'm just going to go ahead and start cutting the rest of the stuff up and layering it up. And I'll show you um, before it goes into the oven what it looks like. All right, so I'm going to edit out that little bit between the potatoes and the onions because I think I broke a few FDA laws in how to use a mandolin and I wouldn't want to show you how not to use one. And oh my goodness, these onions are so, oh my goodness, they are so hot. All of a sudden it hit me like, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man, that is one hot onion. Okay. Maybe I can see to do the rest of this. I don't know. Oh, wow. That's hot. All right. So we're going to pile on the cabbage. If I could see. Woo. Mercy. Now, sometimes you have to do a little padding to get it all in there. Um, but one thing about cabbage is once it cooks, um, it'll start to cook down too. There's a lot of water in cabbage. So you don't have to put any kind of water or anything in this. No liquid because it will have its own due to the cabbage. Now my husband really, really likes um, the corned beef. So at some point I will probably add a little more to one side of it for him because he really, he always tells me I don't add enough and I told him, well it's the whole can so I had to buy another can. So there we go. And I know it looks, looks kind of full. It is, that's okay. And then we just get our fingers dirty and put this on the top. Just crumble it up. And like I said, it's going to cook down. And I will add some more to one side for him. I'll go crack another can open. Getting it out of the can is what's the hard part. Okay. And you could also add um, pepper to this if you want to. But I wouldn't add any more salt to it. I, I typically don't. And if my husband wants any more salt, I'll have him add it himself just because uh, the corned beef is really salty. So I only salt the potatoes so that that layer has a little salt on it. But that right there is pretty much it in a nutshell. I'll foil this up and put it into a 350 oven for one hour. And when um, we pull that out, I'll bring Mimo over here and we'll eat a bowl of her soup and a little scoop of my casserole and see what we think this New Year's. All right, we're finally done. Uh, mine come out of the oven. I actually, it was probably more like an hour and 15 minutes on that because I had a lot of cabbage in there. And you could probably tell this is the side that I didn't add extra to. And I added some extra over here for my husband. And Mima brought her cornbread over. So I'm going to make myself a bowl of her soup here. This is <laughs> something that has a hole in the ladle. Mm -hmm. But um, so this is the soup. And she's going to dish herself a portion of the casserole there. So it smells good. Is so hot. <laughs> I know. I had a mishap with those onions earlier. They were hot too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's cool it down here. Mmm. Now, a big chunk of cornbread. Mmm. Oh, this looks good. Oh, it's good. That's nice. <laughs> mm. Let's try some cornbread. Now, you have a hard time finding. The cornmeal that you like here. Yes, I like Martha White self-rising corn, yellow cornmeal. Right. And it's hard to find here. We thought we were going to have to either have it shipped from West Virginia. Yes. Or bought on Amazon. And it was expensive on Amazon. Very, very. Like five five pounds? No, two pounds. It was very small. Yeah, it was a very small amount. For, anyway. for, what they, for what they wanted for it. but Mmm. Mm. Mm, that's good. 
Oh, yeah. This now, is very good. I know what my husband would say. He needs more corned beef. Mm -hmm. I mean, just because he just loves it. But You know mm -hmm. that corned beef? And I had mentioned earlier that I'm not a huge fan of corned beef. I like it. I like it for the flavoring. Mm -hmm. But this is very good. I'm, I'm willing to actually pick up pieces of corned beef with my fork. Yeah. Now, I have never made a corned beef. I mean, I see them in the store, but I just haven't got my nerve up. I need somebody that's Irish to talk me through it, I think. I mean, I just need some, like, you can do it. <laughs> you can, you can do it. You could do it. Yeah. Maybe maybe you and I will try to tackle that sometime. Mm -hmm. like, now, my some. mother, uh, I can remember, uh, I think even after it was after my dad passed away, Mom uh, wanted a corned beef brisket mm -hmm. to bake. And she, uh, I found one somewhere in a, in a store, and I can remember her making that because she was just craving a corned beef brisket. I don't remember what it tasted like, <laughs> but I just remember that was one of the things that, uh, that she enjoyed mm -hmm. eating, mm -hmm. that we didn't eat. I, I don't really remember eating it when I, we were growing up, unless it, I was, as a child, was like, I'm not going to eat that. Oh, yeah, well, and that could you know, have happened. I have six kids. I get mm. that a lot. <laughs> like, there's, there's this right here. People kept ask, coming in and smelling what was going on in the kitchen. And what are we going to eat? You know, I'm like, well, there's corned beef and cabbage. And we had some little people just kind of turned around and walked off. <laughs> but, um, you know, you can take it or leave it. That's what's for dinner tonight. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you can, these, these meals are great all throughout fall, winter, spring, those dreary days when you don't want to mess up the whole kitchen. It's, you know, the soup is one pot, the casserole is one, and of course the cornbread. I love the cornbread. So, um, yeah, I think we could go ahead and feed the family, feed those that are willing. That will, well, yeah. they've got two options. That's right. You've or got they it. could have a glass of milk and crumble some cornbread in it. You know, that's one thing I haven't, I have never done. Oh, it's it's good. My I dad, would. my dad would do that in the evenings. That would be a late evening snack. For I him. remember my dad doing it. And mm -hmm. pepper, you have you to have, have to. a ton. Of, I, I, dad would coat it, and I kept thinking, it just looks like pepper. Just a couple of weeks ago, I had one piece of cornbread left, and I, I thought, I'm just going to eat that for a snack this evening instead of a bowl of popcorn. <laughs> and I poured me, I put crumbled it up in a, a glass. Poured just enough milk to cover it, salted it real good, peppered it real good, and that was my snack for the evening. Mm. Well, maybe I'll try sometime. I'll get brave and, and try. I made sauce, or hey, we call head cheese. If you can do sauce, week, so. you can do cornbread. Yeah, well, well, I'll have to <clears throat> venture into eating cornbread with milk. So. <laughs> All righty. So thank you for um, joining us while we bring a little of our heritage to your table. If you like our videos, subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. And you can also find us on Instagram. And Facebook. And Facebook. And be sure to hit that little bell for notifications. <laughs> 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 All right, Bia, turn her on. <laughs>